Sumdaik Dikyo Hun Sen, President of the CPP and President of the Senate of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Honorable Chung Yi Jung, Chairman of ICAP Standing Committee. Honorable Heads of Political Parties, Honorable Delegates, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. I stand here today with a deep sense of humility in front of this august body of political parties, political leaders representing many political parties in Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America, and Europe. It is indeed an honor for me to have this opportunity to raise a very important topic of the moment in world affairs for your reflections and actions. Hence, I refer to the pressing need to seek peace and reconciliations. Our global community finds itself at an inflection point. The foundations of peace, built upon the principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter since the end of the Second World War, are being tested to the limits by intense rivalries. Today, we are living in an atmosphere of great uncertainty with great powers challenging the rule-based international order. But world affairs and global governance should not be all about great powers. It is important to recognize that middle powers and small states also possess both the agency of and ambitions to play meaningful roles in geopolitical and geoeconomic diplomacy to foster peace and around the world. My country, Cambodia, is certainly one of them. We are keen to contribute to the building of a global community bound together by peace, prosperity, and inclusive multilateralism. In this regard, I am pleased that this year Cambodia has the honor to host the 12th General Assembly of the International Conference of ASEAN Political Parties, ICAP, to energize our dialogue on this important topic of peace and reconciliations. ICAP is well respected for its role as a bridge for political and ideological divide. In a context of a growing diverse global politics, I believe that ICAP will continue to serve as an important channel for political parties to come together under one roof for dialogues and cooperation across our diverse regions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Cambodia's journey is a powerful testament to the transformative pact of national reconciliation decades of conflicts. Our story of achieving total peace in 1998 and uniting the entire country for the first time in the past 500 years is deeply embedded in our nation and of course in the hearts of our people. Strolling down our memory lane in the midst of the guerrilla warfare with the Khmer Rouge forces, it was Samdak Dekjo Hun Sen who charted a new course for Cambodia by advocating for dialogue and political solutions. Given the level of animosity between the conflicting parties, particularly with the Khmer Rouge, whose regimes oversaw millions of Cambodians killed, the idea of negotiation was purely inconceivable. And yet, he had the courage, and if it were meant to put his life on the line, to choose the past, let's travel in the name of peace and national unity. The peace divided that Cambodia has enjoyed over the past 26 years reminds us on how much we have gained through the win-win policy of some like the Johan Sands. This motivating factor certainly deri drives our peace activism and our efforts to contribute to the solution of ongoing conflicts around the world. Every politician should bear utmost responsibility to peace and peace should not be secondary to electoral victory or certain ideological goals. Extremism and radicalism should be condemned and not become a ticket to political office. Countries should follow rule-based international order that promotes peace and refrain from meddling in internal affairs of others, causing unrest or ultimately bringing about region change by undemocratic means. It should not be 
an accepted practice for nations to exploit the vulnerabilities of developing countries by launching smear campaigns, spreading false information or fake news, and imposing unilateral sanctions on anyone or any country who does not adhere to a particular geopolitical agenda. Being a past victim of such intoxicated political behaviors and international relations. I wish to underline that CPP stands resolute in defending peace, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and developments. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to sustain peace and nature, nurture an environment of reconciliations. Building unity through fostering common understanding is more crucial than ever on the key issues of underpinning peace and reconciliations, namely, first and foremost, our commitment to the principles and purpose of the UN Charter, with a strong emphasis on non-interference, sovereignty, equality, and mutual respect. Secondly, deepening interface dialogues to uplift mutual understanding and trust, bearing in mind that political trust is the foundation for peace, reconciliation, and cooperation. And lastly, bridging intergenerational gap and ideological divides through empathetic dialogue and respects. I cannot emphasize enough that winning Peace requires reconciliation of differences. Peace can only be achieved through peaceful settlement of conflicts, based on dialogue, consultations, and a win-win approach. While strengthening our national defense is our sovereign right, it should not overshadow our commitment to dialogue and peaceful resolutions. The peace we cherish must be nurtured every day to sustain it. I would like to conclude my remarks by stressing that reconciliation, reconciliation with our adversary, as Sam Dyke Joe has proven to us, is a strength, not as a weakness. Reconciliation is for those with the wisdom to see the win-win solution to war, not a surrender. On that positive note and hopeful note, I would like to declare the official opening of the 12th ICAP General Assembly under the theme, A Quest for Peace and Reconciliation. Thank you very much.